rates of change. Up to now, we used the deriv derivative used to determine the slope. The derivative can also be used to determine the rate of change of one variable with respect to another. What does this mean? Okay. Now, uh, this topic we were talking about position function and velocity and accelerations. And using this position, we can find the rate of change of the velocity. Okay. So look at here. A common use for rate of change is to describe the motion of an object moving in a straight line. In such problem, it is customary to use either a horizontal or a vertical line with a design, uh, designated origin to represent the line of motion. On such lines, movement to the right or upward it is considered to be in the positive direction and movement to the left is considered to be in negative direction. Now, the function s that gives the position. Our object as a function of time t is called position function here. If over a period of time delta t, the object change its position by the amount, then as you know, we can set up delta s equal to delta uh, s t plus delta s and minus s t here. So based on this, the rate equal to distance over time, and that we just call average velocity. Okay? Let's look at one example. A billiard ball is dropped from a height of 100 feet. The ball's height s at time t is the position function given as s equal to negative 16t squared plus 100. Find the average velocity over each of the following time intervals. So, let's try to solve average velocity interval between 1 and 2 here. Okay. So, as we discussed before, average velocity, just say rate, equal to delta s over delta t here, right? Okay. Therefore, you need to find a position based on those two intervals. So I'm going to put s1, which means negative 16 times 1 square plus 100, which is negative 16 plus 100 equal to 80. Four. Now, S2, which is negative 16 times 2 squared plus 100, which means negative 16 times 4 plus 100, that equal to negative 64 plus 100 equal to 36 here. So, based on this, now we can set up the rate, which means average velocity. So, average velocity equal to, so 36 minus 84, so 36 minus 84 over 2 minus 1, so 2 minus 1. So, it's going to be, 48, negative 48 over 1. So average velocity will be negative 48 
feet per second. Okay. So like this, if you do all this problem, answers will be those values. Good. 